Hello my friends, welcome to PMP Exam Prep, Pace and Reasoning, where we look at the knowledge areas but through a situational lens. Today we are going into the world of scope. We've got three situational questions and then one random oddball question at the end. So let's jump straight into our first question. This is where we left off. It reads, you are a project manager in the education industry responsible for implementing a new learning management system for a university. During the execution phase, the project team identifies additional functionality that could significantly enhance the team's capabilities. What should you do next to manage this scope change effectively? A. Assess the impact of the proposed functionality on the project's objectives and deliverables. B. Submit a change request to the Change Control Board to incorporate the additional functionality. C. Consult with the project sponsor and key stakeholders to gather their input on the scope change. D. Update the project management plan to reflect the inclusion of the new functionality. I'll give you some time to think about it. If you need more time, hit the pause button. Just like the real exam, I expect you to spend about a minute, 15 seconds, no more. Let's take a look at the answers. When you have a proposed change, you don't just submit the change without considering the impact. You don't consult with the sponsor and key stakeholders to get their input on the scope change until you understand C is like a quasi change control board. So it's really saying the same thing as B in a way. And D, you cannot do that until you've received the approval to update the plan in that regard. So the answer to this, my friends, is A. Here's the rationale by assessing the impact of the proposed functionality on the project's objectives and deliverables. The project manager can make informed decisions about incorporating the scope change while considering its potential implications on the project's success criteria and overall objectives. Option B, submit the change to the change control board is not the best choice because submitting a change request to the CCB should come after assessing the impact of the proposed functionality. It is important to understand the implications and potential effects of the scope change before initiating the formal change process. Option C that reads consult with the sponsor. This is not best because while consulting with the project sponsors and key stakeholders is important, it is not the immediate next step after identifying additional functionality. It is essential to first assess the impact and feasibility of the scope change before gathering input from stakeholders. Option D is not the best choice because updating the project management plan to reflect the inclusion of the new functionality is a potential action to take, but it should be based on the assessment of the impact and feasibility of the scope change. Updating the plan should be done as a response to the assessment, not as the immediate next step. Now, I want to make this a learning moment and therefore I want to call your attention to the change request process that every project manager should be thinking about for this exam. So let's go into this change request mindset. The first thing that you do when you get a change request is to ensure it is well documented. If the change request is not documented, it is your job as the project manager to ensure documentation. 
And the way you do that is you make the change request template available, you ensure it's filled, and then after that you document that in the change log. So let me show you before we move on to the next question the flow for change requests because it could help you on your exam. Ultimately we are going to get to the outcome but leading to the outcome like I said you may get a verbal request put it in formal writing log it in the change log and then analyze the impact from every perspective schedule perspective how does this change impact schedule cost scope resources communications risk procurement stakeholder you want to look at everything then you send the change request and your impact analysis to the change board if there is one they review the request they then decide the outcome of the change and they log it in the change log as well sharing it with stakeholders to give them an update and then the project manager can carry out the next steps if the change request was approved this is the flow okay you're going to get questions that test your understanding of this logic the outcome could be approve it reject it put it on hold or it could be an answer pending other information or other actions some of the other actions could be getting in touch with the customer to negotiate something different we can't give you a b and c we can give you b and c is that okay another offshoot could be at this point you seek approval from other authorities like the sponsor and the customer if they're not in the ccb and then that anchors back in to the general flow this is the mindset that will really help you on your exam. Let's go back into the questions. So the summary from this question is overall assessing the impact of the functionality is the most appropriate next step. Let's move on to our next question. As a project manager in the construction industry, you are overseeing the construction of a new office building. It goes on to say, during the execution phase, the client requests additional interior design elements that were not originally included in the project scope. What should you do next to manage this scope change appropriately? The options A. Evaluate the feasibility and cost impact of incorporating the additional interior design elements. B. Communicate the client's request to the project team and assess their capacity to accommodate the changes. C. Consult with the project sponsor and client to discuss the potential impact on the project timeline and budget. D. Prepare a change request to formally document and review the client's request for scope change. All right, so three, two, and one. Let's think about what has happened here. You have received a request for additional elements. You need to, of course, check out what exactly this is. But before you invest the time, the effort, and the energy, 
you want to make sure that this goes down formally. The best answer is D. Let's talk about the reasoning. Option D is prepare the change request. By preparing it to review the client's request for scope, you are ensuring the change is evaluated, documented, and reviewed by the appropriate stakeholders, minimizing potential scope creep and maintaining proper project control. Option A is not the best choice. Option A talks about evaluating the feasibility and cost impact. Cost impact is going to be done as part of the process, but it is not what you would do immediately. You need to ensure that you first have a formal change request. Then you can analyze the impact to cost and schedule resources and so on. So it's important to first document and review the request. Option B is not the best choice. It says communicate to the project team. While you're communicating the client request to the team is important, it is not the immediate next step to manage the scope change appropriately. It is necessary to first document and review the request before assessing the team's capacity. These are secondary things, right? Option C. This is not the best choice because consulting with the project sponsor and the client is like saying, mother may I at this point. You're the project manager. Think about it like I'm a PM in a project-oriented firm. So the first thing you should do before any of this is prepare that change request. It is important to have the request formally documented and reviewed before engaging in discussions about the potential impact. So first of all, you're not going to go straight to the sponsor to discuss this. You're going to make sure there's documentation. You're going to make sure there's analysis exactly as I showed you in the previous slides. All right, my friends, let's go on. Let's go on to the final option. We said it's D and we talked about by preparing a change to formally document and review the client's request for scope change, the PM ensures that change is properly documented. You got to follow that process like in the map I just showed you. So hopefully that is going to help you answer all the questions you see in this series that are like that because you will see a few. Next question and this is number six. You are a project manager in the biotechnical industry leading a research project. During the project execution, a new scientific, new scientific discoveries and advancements emerge that could enhance the project outcome significantly. What should you do next to assess the impact of these discoveries on the project scope? A. Conduct a thorough analysis to determine the potential implications of the new scientific discoveries on the project's objectives. B. Engage with the subject matter experts and stakeholders to gather their insights on incorporating the new discoveries into the project. C. Review the project management plan and update it to accommodate the new scientific discoveries and their potential impact. D. Collaborate with the project team to evaluate feasibility and potential benefits of integrating the new discoveries into the project scope. I'll give you some time to think about it. All right, my friends, you hit the pause button if you need more time. So, when you take a look at this question, there are some subtleties in how it is worded. D, collaborate with the project team. Sounds good, right? To evaluate, can we even do this? And what are the benefits of doing this? 
While this sounds like a good option, unfortunately, this is not the right answer. This is wrong, and it is wrong because this does not talk about assessing the impact. It just talks about evaluating, is this possible? What are we going to gain from it? While that's a good question to ask, it is not the first thing you should do. So the answer is not D. So D is eliminated. Option C, review the project management plan and update it to accommodate the new scientific discoveries and their potential impact. While it sounds good, it is not something you would do first because you're not sure if it's going to be done. You first of all need to have that information. You take a look at option B, engage with the SMEs to gather their insights on incorporating the new discoveries into the project. It's like saying, hey, what do you think? Should we incorporate this? So by now you're smart, you've probably figured that the answer is A. Let's examine why the answer is A. Watch the differences between the word implication versus feasibility. Two different words. Implication is more far-reaching. It's like the impact of something. Feasibility is just talking about, can we do this? without considering the implication. Also, benefits, what are we gonna gain from this? But you also need to factor in what is the general overall implication. By conducting a thorough analysis to determine the potential implications of the new scientific discoveries on the project's objectives, the project manager can make informed decisions about incorporating the discoveries into the project scope while considering their impact on project outcomes, feasibility, and alignment with the project goals. So everything else follows. Once you understand the implication, everything else follows. Option B, engage with the SMEs is not the best choice. That should come after conducting a thorough analysis to determine the potential implications. Option C, that's not the best choice because reviewing the project management plan and updating it should come after assessing the impact and it's necessary to first implicate, to first evaluate the implications. Option D, it's not the best choice because collaborating with the project team to evaluate the feasibility and potential benefits should be done after conducting a thorough analysis of the implications. It's subtle, it's very nuanced, but you always want to think about the implication before looking at benefits and feasibility. And with that, my friends, we are done with today's episode. In the next part of our series, we will be going into the schedule area and we will be taking a look at this question I'm showing on the screen first. This question reads, as a project manager in the information technology hardware industry, you're leading an agile project. You can read the rest of what is on the screen, but I have one of those oddball questions to show you. And the reason why I show you these oddball questions, my friends, is because the exam has a lot of surprises. And it's not uncommon that you get a surprise on your exam. And that surprise could be anything from how a question is worded to its volume to its language. So, let's take a look at my curveball question for today. It reads, A project with a significantly low budget was authorized based on the lower end of a rough order of magnitude estimate. For the first phases of the project, no problems occurred. However, in the mid to late phases, high failure rates are found in the production line during product manufacture. The project timeline is compressed and very tight, 
and the cost of pending production work is significantly high. The team of engineers have determined the root causes of the problems and the project team has identified the best solution. However, this solution will require an increase in the budget. What should the project manager do? A. Update the scope and schedule baseline and authorize funds for management reserves. B. Follow through with the authorized change control process. C. Implement the proposed solution and gain team approval for the result. D. Obtain additional funding from the project sponsor. I'll give you some time to think about the answer. Okay, my friends, taking a look at this question, a few things I want to point out. Your exam could very well have some surprises in terms of the length of questions from what I have heard from students. You might have some abnormally long questions, not a whole lot, but they could show up. You also need to understand that what makes the exam challenging to many people is reading through the entire question and being able to complete all 180 questions because of the volume. Okay, So even though this is like a mock question session, it's also a teaching session because I'm trying to teach you how to get through the volume quick and how to focus on what is the right answer from all the distractors because you have three distractors and one right answer. And in cases where you have choose more than one, like choose two and choose three, there could be one distractor or two distractors you need to be able to pinpoint. So just taking a look at the options at face value, there's some of these that are just not good options, even without reading the question. Option C says implement the proposed solution and gain team approval for the result? How does that make sense? You're to gain team approval first, right? You're to gain team buy-in before moving ahead. This is not draconian rule, so option C is not even a good option right off the bat. Now you're left with three. Option A, face value. It says, Update the scope and schedule baseline. Okay. You wouldn't do that first. You would need approval, obviously. But then it goes further to say, authorize funds from management reserves, of all things. Management reserves is for management to authorize because it's what management puts aside for unknown events. So, this is not the best answer. So let's get rid of that. Let's also talk about the loquacious babble that's in this question in the form of the team of engineers have determined the root causes of the problems and the project team has identified the best solution. They identify the best solution. So why do you need to gain approval if they were part of it? Do you see how it all doesn't add up, the story doesn't add up, so you got two left. Option D says obtain additional funding from the sponsor. You do get additional funding, but you don't just walk up to the sponsor and say, give me more money. You need to follow through with the approved change control process. It's the most vanilla flavored answer, but it's the best and the most correct. Because every organization has their way they manage change. Okay? So my friends, I hope you found this to be insightful and helpful and get you into the right headspace for your exam. For those of you taking the test and you need a quick boot camp, I got a half-day boot camp 
This holds every one to two months, depending on demand. We may have one coming up soon, so do check. And if you have any other concerns or you want to join our full 35-hour course, go on down to praiseion.com. Thank you very much, my friends. I'll see you in our next episode. Bye for now.